Are you sick of those damn political crusaders? The anti-libertarian libertarian party? Sick of the violence and coercion that makes up the status servile society with seemingly no escape? Are you looking for real practical solutions to increase your personal freedom and your invulnerability to coercion? If so, kick off your shoes, come inside the polyethylene A tent, and let's talk Vanu. Join your hosts, Shane and Kyle, as they further explore this freedom strategy and develop it into the modern day. You're listening to the Vanu Podcast. And welcome to the Vanu Podcast, the podcast making you invulnerable to coercion. I'm Shane and I'm Jason. Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook and 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com forward slash Vanu. There are obviously a bunch of great titles on there, but I'd recommend Going Mobile, a terrific Vanu and Van Live scene from the 1960s narrated by yours truly. It features some incredible articles by Rayo and tons of great insight from those, those living Vanu uh, back in, you know, 60s and 70s. Again, that link is audibletrial.com forward slash Vanu. And big thanks to Audible for uh, sponsoring this podcast. Uh, so, guys, both websites are now up with SSL certificates. Um, the Vanu website, vanupodcast.com, is just as it was before. Um, but you'll see a nice little, uh, if you're using Google Chrome, uh, you'll at least see a, a little green lock uh, at the top of the page um, versus the unsecure that had, that had been there for over a year. So, um, so yeah, VonniePodcast.com is up and ready to go. But the LUA site is getting a major major visual overhaul. So um, you can still listen to the podcast. You can still you know visit the site and find all the posts and all that. But um, it was just kind of a generic WordPress theme right now um, because I'm going to work on that tonight uh, and get everything uh, kind of ironed out there. So uh, in the next few days, you should see the uh, podcast feeds updated. But in the meantime, let's knock out another live episode here on DLive. And I will go ahead and note um, just for the, the sake of uh, – the people who uh, you know are watching live, I'm hoping I fi- I, I've I'm wor- been working on the settings for um, Open Broadcaster, so hopefully the video is less choppy than it was before. Got some help from uh, from Bodie Andrew Marich, who was actually on here last weekend with us. Um, he knows a lot more about this than I do, so hopefully the streams are streams coming through a little better. Uh, it is a learning experience, and you know as I. Uh, you know, uh, get better at this. I'll start to upgrade the qualities of the streams and such. So uh, just kind of a, a note there. And if you're watching on DLive, uh, please, uh, you know, consider, uh, you know, upvoting this post, share it around, and feel free to leave any questions or comments you may have in the chat. Uh, I will be uh, monitoring that. And uh, Jason, it does look like your video is frozen in Skype. Um, I, so it's not I, a... Uh... Yeah, it, it's <laughs> frozen on the uh, on the live feed too. Okay, okay. Well, just uh, thought I'd let you know there. So uh, I guess, uh, um, you know, a different Jason, I, I hope a different Jason, because if this is you, Jason, I'm going to, you know, refund your money. But um, first off, big thanks to Jason for becoming a patron on <laughs> Patreon uh, at the $5 a month level. Uh, we sincerely appreciate it and hope that you find the bonus content avail- uh, bonus content valuable. And uh, you can get on board, too, by visiting patreon.com forward slash Vanu. Uh, got a lot of exclusive episodes. So you can get uh, early digital access to my book, Vanu, A Strategy for Self-Liberation, which I guess you could say is... The updated version of Rayo's book uh, from the uh, 19, uh, I guess from the 1960s and 1970s. So, um, yeah, patreon.com forward slash Vanu for, uh, for all of the goods, uh, including a, a Vanu email newsletter that, uh, you know, will come out, uh, you know, once a month. So, uh, I guess another note, too, we did hit our first funding goal. So, uh, there will be a Vanu podcast, uh, exclusive Vanu podcast stickers just for our patrons. If you're not a patron, you don't get them. I'm sorry. You just don't get it. Uh, <laughs> it's an exclusive. So uh, joining me is my co-host Jason Booth. Uh, it's good to good, good to be back with you, man. Uh, how are things going? Uh, things could be better. Um, but uh, other than that, you know, I'm okay. Well, that's good. Yeah, you know, things things could all, uh, uh, you know, kind of kind of seems like, you know, things can always be better or they can always be worse. So um, I don't know. I guess it's kind of how you look at it, right? <laughs> well, I, I, I don't want to go into detail on it, but uh, uh, a a good a good friend and 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 her family had a visit had a visit from the uh, from the state from from the bludgies, and the bludgies took their three kids and gave them to um, uh, a, a family member, 
and and one of the kids is still you know breastfeeding so on what grounds i mean what was the what was the reason they missed they missed a court date that's that's all it was is it, that's all it was is, is they missed a court date um they 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 had moved and they were in michigan and and the court date was back in ohio and and they weren't able to get or to missouri and they weren't able to get back to missouri so the judge awarded custodial uh, um uh, custodial uh, parenting ship to the to the to the family member and uh, yeah yeah it took, reminds me of uh... kid, yeah took three kids away from their mom and dad yay state thank you that's uh it's 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 despicable uh it really really is and unfortunately i mean you'd think uh with uh you know conservative conservatives being all about family values and such uh you, you'd think that this would be like a, a much more wider discussed thing that the state literally steals kids from their parents uh you know every single day with you know just the the minimalist of grounds if if if, if there's any grounds at all um so i i mean uh i don't know if, if someone's raised in a bad household you know what you know what's a worse way to grow up almost guaranteed you know <laughs> the, and the foster system you know and uh and and, and you know and with, the, with the state actually being in control of uh of your life and and all of those yeah of things. so it's despicable man that's that's the shit that really pisses me off uh really really is um i mean that's mm-hmm. that's, that's another thing i mean we, we could go on and, and you know uh, complain about grievances all day long um there's 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 uh plenty of terrible stuff the state does uh that is uh, <sighs> for sure everything the state does is terrible I don't know. They're pretty good with roads. No, they're not. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're not. I got potholes all the way up and down my road. That is true. That is true. Yes. <laughs> but um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I guess uh, what uh, what what's new, man? You anything you want to uh, discuss before we uh, before we get uh, get into it? Um, not really. No, I don't. I don't have anything new to report other than uh, other than that. That was my only. <sighs> my only, my only little thing that was eating at me. Yeah, yeah. Well, I guess I guess um, I yeah, so the the websites is uh, one thing I wanted to mention. Uh, then I guess uh, another thing I'll mention is that uh, on Monday I'll be going to another voluntarist meetup, and uh, I sent you the uh, screenshot of the tweet. But uh, apparently, oh, uh, yes. apparently one of uh, apparently some folks here in Austin that I met at the voluntarist meetup have been listening to the Vania podcast, and he told me, you know, mm-hmm. you know, go, you know, you know, give, you know, t- tell, 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 tell uh, I think it was Jeff, tell Jeff about uh, Vania at the next meetup. I was like, okay, yeah, I'll make it, I'll make it this Sunday, yeah. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> so, um, I, I mean, now that I'm, now that things are kind of settling in with my my job, uh, I've, I've been, you know, doing the work from home thing for it's been three weeks now, but it's been one week of of actually, uh, you know, on my own working and. Um, now that things are kind of settling down, uh, I'm probably going to end up attending two or three meetups a week, uh, you know, blockchain, uh, Bitcoin meetups. And uh, there's actually one really popular developer, uh, you know, blockchain developer meetup that I want to go to. Um, and, you know, since, you know, the since the since uh, since it's out now, yes, uh, Vanu coin, uh, I'll go there with, the I guess, the obviously the purpose of networking, but also to, uh, you know, promote Vanu coin. <laughs> so and uh i i'm thinking here at some point once we get the website up um i'm thinking we'll do a an episode on uh, just talking about what we're trying to do with Vanu coin um and uh, it's it's very very unique uh, it's very very unique i can promise you that so um you can expect that uh in, in in the near future uh as well so i don't really have any other updates i guess we can we can go ahead and uh and get into it here so i figure we'll start by discussing the risk and reward in dealing with the state uh and the bludgies and the context of our buddy uh, jeremy hangeller's recently concluded case and also more generally i suppose and uh, then i think we should talk about vanu uh, an invulnerability to coercion in the digital realm with Fascist Book, Fascist Tube, and Twatter ramping up the insanity. Uh, I guess, I don't even know if it's really a, it's, I don't even know if it's really a ramp up. It's just, a, I guess, maybe specific targeting. I don't know. Um, whatever whatever description you want to put there. Um, you know, I think this is a discussion uh, worth having. So, to begin, uh, we were hoping to have, uh, we were going to do this live stream yesterday, but um, decided to, to push it back toward to, to today. And we were hoping to have Jeremy on to, to kind of, you know, give us the, the full deets on uh, his recently concluded court case. But I think there are a couple elements that uh, that we should discuss that are relevant to Vanu. And so I guess we'll just provide a brief overview of uh, kind of what uh, what happened. And uh, obviously, if you want to hear it uh, straight from him, you can go to uh, his Steam account, at AbolitionistJ, uh, to catch his court, uh, his court vlog and then also, uh, you know, just keep up with his uh, journeys as a, as a fan nomad but i guess uh jason that's uh that's 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 abolitionist j j a y not just the letter j thank you thank you for that just just want to make that clarification 
Yes, yes, and I will put that uh, in, in the show notes of this episode as well. So I guess uh, step in and please feel free to correct me or expound upon something if I, if I you know, miss something. But, but basically, um, Jeremy was going to, uh, you know, all the way up until the morning of when he was supposed to go to, you know, start his jury trial. Uh, he really wasn't sure what he was, what he was going to do. Um, I think the, this, the <coughs> what his lawyer said the worst case scenario was, was 18 months uh, probation, and he couldn't leave Long Island. So it, yeah, he, that couldn't, he couldn't only leave the, like, he couldn't just not leave New York. He could not leave the county um, that, you know, he was in. So um, that was, I guess, the c- probably the worst case scenario he was facing if he were to lose this trial. Um, and the, the last plea deal that uh, the state, that I guess uh, the, the, uh, the, the state came, or the DA came out with was, I think it was like 35 hours community service, uh, like $500 in fines, and um, I think that's it, isn't it? Just like $500 in fines and community service. I don't think there were any other stipulations. Uh, uh, I think I think that was it, and then it was uh, and then it was sealed. That was that right. was the other thing. It was sealed, uh, so it wouldn't like so it wouldn't show up on any on any background checks or anything. Um, and yeah, that like the 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 probation thing, like that was. That was the big issue. That was the that was the really big issue is, is being on probation and and not being able to leave the county that yeah. uh, on on Long Island, um, and that is that would open him up to all sorts of vulnerability. You know, by making him stay there, you know, with 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 the other issues going on with with his vehicle registration and 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 all that other stuff. It's just. No. <laughs> like, yeah, that's that's that that's was... what I told him. I, I meant to reach out to him before, but I reached out to him the morning of uh, when he was supposed to go to trial, and I was like, "Hey, man, you know, good mm-hmm. luck today." And uh, he kind of, we kind of, you know, had a short, maybe 10, 15 minute conversation. He kind of laid out the, mm-hmm. I guess what what he could be expecting, and I, I told him I was like, "Man, spending eighteen months in not just New York and Long Island, um, that would be miserable for you, man." Um, I said, mm-hmm. I, "I really don't think you have too much of a choice here." Um, it's you know, kind of like voting Republican or Democrat. You don't have you, there's there's not really a choice there. You kind of just there, there, there's no choice. So so I I completely understand why he you know. I, so I guess to conclude the story, I guess uh, I guess later on in the morning he decided to uh, to take the plea deal, and I think he was a little hard on himself when it came to the uh, the whole principle. Oh, thing. he um, was he was very hard on himself. I mean, yeah. See, uh, see, like, like if he if he was running for office or, or you know voting or something like that, where it was completely voluntary, uh, then yeah, you know, I call him out on that too, uh, and I think he would be mm-hmm. he would be appreciative of me calling him out on that. But in a situation where, you know, I mean, he, this wasn't really his choice, right? Uh, it's kind of like with uh, when we talked about Cody Wilson's case. I mean, that wasn't really uh, it wasn't really too much of a choice for him. They basically shut down his business. Um, so mm-hmm. I mean. Him taking a plea deal, I don't see anything, anything, any violation of principles there uh, either. I mean, yeah, it's it, it'd be, it'd be, it'd be miserable being for miserable for him to be there for eighteen months, and he would have to. I think there was, um, I think he mentioned this. He would have had. I think there was an additional fine he'd have to pay if he stayed in New York too. So I don't know if that's mm-hmm. public or not. I'm, he, he's pretty much tells he pretty much tells everyone about everything, but I don't remember all the specifics. So, no. <laughs> um. And, and I, I hate to use the term. I really hate to use this 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 phrase, but it it was the lesser of two evils. Um, the the amount of media coverage that that the whole thing got, um, the 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 news, you know, showing the clip and 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 the the, the Facebook post that led to the news showing up and and all this other stuff. Like <sighs> the chances of him walking away right being being found not guilty or, or or being acquitted or whatever else um it was a, it's a toss up right it, it really was a toss up it was it was a 50 50 type of thing yeah and that's, so, and that's and that's what i told him you know early on i was like man this is a highly highly publicized case like you you it's mm-hmm. it, it kind of blew up uh, i said yeah like if you're going to take this to trial you really should push for a change of venue i don't know whatever came of that i'm not sure if they they denied it or or, or whatever it was but that'd be the only possible way if if i was in his shoes that'd be the only way i'd take that to trial because i mean oh, yeah. regardless of regardless of the publicity i mean it's this obviously it's it's so much weighted against you um, that the chances of you winning are, are are pretty slim even if you have a slam dunk case the state wants to get you they can typically find ways to to uh to i guess to, to bullshit the process and all of that so i mean that'd be the only real way i i mean i i give a major props for ta- for you know taking it forward this long um because i think with most people oh, um with, with with how with how much they you know 
jerked him around through this entire thing, like 18 months or however long it was. Uh, uh, 16 six, months. Six, 16 months, 17 court appearances or something like that? Yeah, I mean, I think most people would just get fed up and, you know, just stop, you know, sooner. So, you know, I give major yeah. props for even, you know, for, for not just rolling over um, immediately. Hmm. So, um, I mean, I, I understand exactly why why he did it. I, I told him I'd probably do the same thing. You know, it's kind of a lifeboat scenario. I mean, I, I couldn't know for sure until I was in that situation. Right. Um, but mm-hmm. at the same time, you know, considering all the, all the facts uh, with, with, with everything, you know, surrounding the case, he's been very public about, um, I would I probably, I probably wouldn't have, uh, you know, kept up fighting <laughs> that long. So. No, I, I probably, uh, I, I don't want to say that, that I would have, but, um, He's got he's got a lot of resolve. He's got a lot of resolve. He he held out. He held out as long as he could. Until the reality of the situation really forced a decision. And and I, I think that's what he did is is he had he had to make that decision. He ha- absolutely had to make that decision because getting probation. 18 months being stuck on Long Island, be stuck in that county on Long Island. Yeah. Um, that that blows ev- that blows everything else out, right? That that blows out Indiana and everything and all those other things that he wanted to do. And, those and are damn it, those he, are, like, he's 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 been doing the Van Nomad thing for like um, for like three three and a half months now, and he's really really enjoying it. That was another thing I told him too. It's mm-hmm. like, man, I mean, you've got a bunch of plans to travel. 18 months, you could get a lot done in 18 months, you know, on the road. Um, yeah. So I mean, like it's. I mean, yeah, and, and got to look out for, you know, uh, you know, naturally we all look out for rational self-interest. And I, I mm-hmm. mean, I, I don't know if I was in this case as a fan, like as a fan, no matter if I was, if I was able to live this lifestyle and I was living the lifestyle now, um, man, I, I wouldn't let the state get in the way of that. Um, I wouldn't, uh, I really wouldn't. Well, yeah. Not, not only, not only that, not only not being able to do that, but being stuck on long Island for 18 more months, that opens up. That's, that's 18 months of, potentially being fucked with 24 7 365 by the state yeah right that's, yeah so that's, so so even in the context totally unacceptable yeah yeah and by the way jason you might i don't know if you've tried this but you might want to try to turn off your video and turn it back on um i don't know if you've tried to do that or not but just just as a, i guess a thought there um but but yeah i mean even if, even in the context of vanu i mean uh oh, hopefully didn't drop the call. Um, but um, you know, even in the context of Vanu, uh, you know, making um yeah, connection loss, that's good. I don't know what's going on there. But uh anyways, yeah, even in the context of Vanu with um yeah, as Jason was saying, uh with with how much of a target he is there in Long Island, I mean yeah, uh, definitely more more vulnerable to coercion. And, uh, you know, as a Van Nomad, you know, Vaughn was, uh, you know, as he said that, you know, Vaughn was largely, was very influential in, um, in, in that whole thing. So, uh, I mean, that's that's kind of his, uh, it's, I guess, one of his goals is, you know, beca- becoming more vulnerable to coercion. And uh, that's, uh, you know, that the chance of losing that, um, the chance of losing that case is, uh, <laughs> yeah, certainly uh, more vulnerable to coercion. And, uh Okay. Yeah, it looks like uh Jason's uh try to call him back and see if that works. Sorry guys, technical difficulties. Always fun. But yeah, I'll go ahead and uh oh that noise. Bear with us for a moment, guys. Okay, well. Okay, well, it says he's not online. Okay, so, anyways, anyways, um, in the context of Vanu, yeah, that's not a... Uh, not a not a good route. So, um, what I really wanted to discuss in regards to this, other than, I guess, uh, you know... Trying to to tell him that uh, he's been a little he's, he's been a little too hard on himself, but I do understand uh, you know why. Um, considering he's you know he he wanted he really wanted to to push it and all that. Um, but what I really wanted to talk about was when you know could plea deals be considered legal interstices? Now we talked about legal interstices quite a bit um, on uh, we talked about it in I think season one and uh, I think season two as well. So. For a definition here, um, 
that's going to be. Okay, so I'll mute that until he gets back in here. But, um, okay, yeah, it's not even letting him uh, join the call. But anyways, um, so legal interstices are gray areas within the law that can be used to violate the spirit of the law while simultaneously keeping the letter of the law. Another way to think about this is legal loopholes. So the gun show loophole, uh, Ray even saw, uh, in, in, in regards to van nomadism, he saw a driver's license, you know, insurance and things like that uh, to be legal interstices too. So the question that I wanted to discuss with Jason, and hopefully he can get back in here, is uh, would legal interstices be considered, uh, or would plea deals be considered legal interstices? And off the top, no, not really. Um, I, I, I don't think so. Um, I, I really don't think so, because legal interstices are things that you can use, so uh, you can you know, voluntarily use, um, which I guess you can voluntarily t take a plea deal as well, but it's not, it's not a loophole within the law, right? Um, it's not uh, something that you can exploit um, to increase your invulnerability to coercion. Uh, I don't necessarily see it as that. So, yeah, I don't think so. I don't think so. Um, and I'd love to, to get Jason back in here to, to get his thoughts on this. Uh, let us see. One moment, guys. Okay. So, yeah, I guess initially, yeah, I don't think they are. Um, I don't even think, uh, by, by Rayo's definition, um, I don't think they would, uh, um, would be considered, considered that. So now, I guess the, 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 the argument against it, which, you know, Jason might have brought up, is legal interstices are utilized by Venuans. They're, they're not to be relied upon because, uh, you know, Vanu is based on reality and, and laws and their interpretations often change. So, um, you know, legality is not, uh, not reality uh, a lot of the time. And plus, when the state doesn't even play by their own rules, um, it's, uh, it's not smart to rely upon those. But the idea is to utilize legal interstices to make one more invulnerable to coercion. So, I guess in one sense, yes, a plea deal could make one. Uh, in Jeremy's case, definitely, I think uh, it made him more invulnerable to coercion, considering the the alternative. Um, but I guess in, in another, I guess on the flip side, you know, if he would have fought it and won, then there would have been no stipulations whatsoever. But again, I mean, community service is so minimal um, compared to 18 months probation, or I think the maximum sentence was like two years in, two years in uh, jail. So um, yeah, in Jeremy's case, I think he definitely made himself more invulnerable to coercion. But I think generally speaking, I don't think plea deals could be considered legal interstices, um, just based off kind of the foundation that Ray laid and then what we've kind of developed upon, uh, you know, going forward into... Um, you know, going up into and into now. So, all right, let's see. Jason did hop back on here. Let's see if we can get him back in here. Oh, Skype. Oh, Skype. There we go. Okay, let me change the speaker volume here. All right, there you go, man. You hear? You here? I'm here. Right on. Okay. So yes, we are back. Your cameras. Your cameras. Uh, <laughs> moving again. So yeah, it was. Uh, I think it was Skype. I think it was Skype. <clears throat> but, that, was, uh, that was weird. I went to I went to click on the camera and it booted me, and then it, I had to sign out, and then I had to log back in, and it updated. Ah, uh, I guess that might have yeah. <laughs> oh, the Skype updates; those are always fun. Fucking Skype. Yep, yep. Couldn't have put it better myself. So, I guess just to fill you in, I was kind of covering, uh, you know, our plea would plea deals be considered legal interstices? In my just a, a real brief overview, <laughs> no, because. Legal interstices are loopholes within the law that Venuans can exploit to make themselves more invulnerable to coercion, and I just don't see plea deals as being that. So, what do you think? What do you think? Are plea deals legal interstices? Oh, absolutely not. They're they're not lo they're not loopholes or anything of the sort. Um, plea deals are mercy from the state. That that that's all that it is. It's it's the state saying, okay, we'll we'll only give you this little bit of punishment if you said that you did wrong. Right. It's like it's like a, a, a parent saying, you know, I'm, I'm not angry at you. I'm just disappointed. Here's your punishment for being disappointed. OK, so it, it's it's they're by no means an illegal necessities because they're not they're not loopholes. You're not you're not using any sort of legal means to get yourself out of trouble or, or to limit your trouble. This is the state saying, hey. Here's a little bit of punishment, right? Or right. Here's, here's 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 less punishment than what we could do, right? And the law doesn't change because of a plea deal, right? I mean, the the, the laws oh, on the books no. were still the same, so it's not it's not a legal loophole. It's just um it's it's just uh 
you know the the, the states uh, you know not having a lot of uh, not having as much as many resources to prosecute all of the crimes on the books you know plea deals uh, you know make things go a lot faster considering trials can take days and uh, you know um, plea deals uh, take a lot a lot shorter amount of time so um, and you know the state still wins <laughs> right in a plea deal they they uh, they won the case so it uh, typically uh, always mm-hmm. comes with uh, you know uh, admitting to 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 guilt so. Um, I guess that, that kind of covers that. Uh, you know, plea deals are not legal interstices, but um, probably not a <laughs> probably an unexpected you know topic of discussion. But uh, I try to apply Vanu to as many things as possible, mm-hmm. um, just to kind of you know gauge whether or not uh, whether or not it's, uh, it's applicable or not. So, um, so I guess let's go ahead and move forward here um, to the risks and rewards in dealing with the state and the bludgies. Now, Jason, you brought this idea up to me, uh, and we were hoping to have Jeremy on to talk about these two things, obviously. But um, I guess. <clears throat> risk and reward. I mean, uh, we, we talked about uh, the the alternative if, if Jeremy would have lost the uh, lost the trial. Um, but mm-hmm. I mean, there was some reward there, wasn't there? I mean, he can continue living the van nomad lifestyle. Um, yeah, he can continue living the van nomad lifestyle. So I guess what 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 are your what are your thoughts on you know risks well, risk and rewards in dealing with the state? Well, 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 what it is, what Jeremy got was an appeasement. That was that was the state saying, hey, we don't like what you did, but We'll 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 only punish you this much because we don't want to go to trial. Um, so the risk versus reward. What what Jeremy did, Jeremy Jeremy's plea deal that he took offers the great amount, the greatest amount of war, reward, while greatly increasing the risk. If he had gone to trial and lost and got eighteen months, the reward would have been what nothing. He'd have been stuck in the state. He'd have been stuck in that county for what eighteen more months, being exposed to the Servile Society three sixty five, you know, or twenty four seven three sixty five, the the opportunity to be fucked with by the bludgies, um, and and that's not including the Servile Society itself. Um, so the the risk of going to the trial and losing was far greater than any sort of reward that he would have got. Um, of course, of course, he, he could have gone to trial and won. Absolutely, that's that's a possibility. But as as we discussed, what are we talking a, like one to five percent? Like we can't maybe. we can't know. But <laughs> I mean, like, like what like one in four, one in five, something like that. You know, it's it's not good odds. Vegas wouldn't take him. So I think taking that taking that plea deal was. Was was a very good move because it it offered the greatest reward, while greatly greatly reducing the potential risk. Yeah, um, yeah, exactly. And I guess another another I guess with with the reward of um I guess with the the reward of the whatever what the result of the plea deal was. I mean, he can now um if you look at kind of the 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 rewards, you know, more immediate than, than what's uh, more, more immediate than, than just not having to be on and stuck in Long Island for 18 months, but also uh, something I wrote about in my book called Jurisdictional Arbitrage. And uh, it's the practice of taking advantage of the discrepancies between competing legal jurisdiction. Um, so the idea is that uh, obviously New York is a commie hellhole, much like just much like Illinois, uh, much like and California. California. Um, so uh, obviously, being able to leave New York and take advantage of you know lower cost of living, um, mm-hmm. being able to take advantage of, um, I mean the, I guess again like the 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 jur- jurisdictional arbitrage, the the variations in laws, you know the, the laws being laws in other places being more, uh, you know uh, uh, I guess. Uh, 150 pounds of pressure on his neck rather than 175. So, um, you know, that is advantageous. Uh, you know, with South Dakota, I mean, he went through the yearbestaddress.com thing. And uh, as, as far as, uh, you know, South Dakota versus New York, I mean, no inheritance tax, no property tax, no, uh, I don't think there's a state income tax. I mean, there's, there's just so many rewards that, uh, you know, are, are more outside of the immediate. So I, I think... Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I, I think it's uh, it's it's certainly a case by case basis, right? Uh, you know what's what would what would the best outcome be? And uh, obviously, when it when it comes to the state, you don't always know what you you aren't always one hundred percent sure. But um, it's it's kind of like a cost benefit analysis, uh, only mm-hmm. more in regards to uh, I guess coercion, <laughs> at least in the sense. So, um, well, absolutely, yeah. you you can you can even break it down to, to like economics, the economics of having to stay. In New York, in in that county for eighteen months, the the economic cost of staying there, the the the, the cost of living, the, of food, of 
of of gas of of all the other you know things that that he needs um, of of medical care for Cameron for 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 Murder Dog. Um, the 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 cost of staying there outweighs the the cost of traveling of, of buying elsewhere. Like right now he's 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 on our, he's on his way to, up to Maine to, to go see a couple friends of ours. It's I, I guarantee it's cheaper. Things are cheaper in Maine than they are on that part of that part of Long Island. You know, for sure. Uh, every, everything everything that that he needs is cheaper on the road. So the the economic cost. Of, of traveling, of, of eventually going to Indiana and, and all that good stuff, or, or going down to Anarchon in Virginia after he gets back from from the from from the Northeast. Yeah, that's that's I'm glad he's getting all, to go to that. Yeah, all, all that traveling is still cheaper than having to stay in, in that particular county. And and we're not just talking like like you know um uh FRNs now. We're talking like like, like on, on his, on his mind, on his, on his happiness, on his freedom. Um, those, those all have, um, I don't want to say a monetary amount on them, but they, they, the, the, the economics of, of losing those is, is far greater than, 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 than what it would be if he was on the road. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And I mean, it, you, you think about it in this way too, uh, you know, uh, Jeremy, like this is the time he has to live as a van nomad, right? Uh, now he's mm-hmm. he's con- he's, think- he's considering doing it more more you know extensively, but at the same time, uh, you know these opportunities. Yeah, he's, don't... Ta- he's talking about he's talking about getting a van and, and an RV and yeah, exactly. So and, I mean, and these... doing this doing this long term. Right, right. But but even if you know, even if uh, you know, maybe a couple of years, you know, he decides to buy that piece of land. If he's uh, been stuck in Long Island for eighteen months, um, mm-hmm. then he would have lost out on a lot of experiences. So um, with with him having the opportunity to actually live this lifestyle now, um, I mean, and all of the people he gets to see, um, you know, he's just traveling around to you know different anarchist play, uh, anarchist houses and hanging out. I mean, that's uh, <laughs> no. that's incredible. I mean, that's 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 something that's um, I. I don't know, man. I, I think I think he made the right decision. I I, mm-hmm. I, I really really do. So um, I guess I guess one other note here, because um, since he was I, I guess he was kind of talking about uh, in some of his videos how he kind of violated his principles or something. But if we're uh, which I don't think he did, we've already kind of talked about no, that. But no. more, but but directly regarding Vanu, um, basically if the action you pursue makes you more invulnerable to coercion, there really is no violation of principles in the context of Vanu. Mm-hmm. Now some people might do say, oh well, like might might say like, well that's that's more loose than you know the non-aggression principle or something. Not really because conflict uh you know co- you know coercion is uh, more likely to happen you know in, in instances of conflict right so mm. if you're going and you know robbing people's houses or you know beating you know beating up people for no reason um you know that will make you more vulnerable to coercion so um so yes at least in the context of vanu if w- whatever you whatever you do makes you more invulnerable to coercion there's no violation of principles or anything of that mm-hmm. nature so no. i just want to kind of toss that in there but uh, anything else yeah. on that i want i want to carry this over and and into another into another quick discussion, um, uh, away away from Jeremy, uh, 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 but still in the realm of risk versus reward. Um, you see all these these videos on YouTube and and whatnot about people getting pulled over and, and you see the window rolled up and and you see them ta- saying, oh, am I being detained? Am I being detained? Am I free to go? Uh, you know, quoting the Constitution, quoting you know uh, uh, Rothbard or, or or whatever else. Like like the like those are magic words that's gonna make the the blood you go away. Um, again, the 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 risk versus reward of doing that. It's, and in, in some cases it might work, but I I think in in other cases as as of a new one, um, staying away from that. You know, if 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 a, if a cop pulls you over, it's 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 yes sir, yes ma'am, hi, how you doing? Be polite. Get them. Get them. Get 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 the get the piece of paper from them. Get the ticket from them. Whatever it is, be polite about it, and get away from them as fast as possible. Yeah. Right. The 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 longer you prolong the situation, the the greater the risk that you put yourself at. Uh, there was a a video two three days ago out of New Mexico. Guy got guy got pulled over for a seatbelt violation. He's got the window rolled up and he won't roll it down and he's he's telling the cops about his rights and and the cop busted the window and dragged him out. Right? That that could that situation could have gone so much worse. But thankfully yeah. that that's all that that's all that happened. 
Um, yeah, no, you're 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 exactly right. And I wrote about that uh, in my book, Vonio's Strategy for Self Liberation. Uh, you know, whenever you're whenever you're put in this uh, you know coercive, potentially violent situation, mm-hmm. uh, you know, it's not time to uh, you know try to argue your case with a cop. That's sure. or argue argue your case with a bludgeon. That's not. He doesn't give a shit anyways. He's a law enforcer. He doesn't you know make the laws or you know interpret them or anything of that nature. Um, it's not time to argue your case. It's not time to tell uh, you know to tell tell the cop all about your all, all about your rights and uh, how. Uh, you know, his uh, his job is immoral and he's just extorting, uh, you know, free people. It's not the time to do that. The idea is to 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 avoid the, you know, get away, you know, get away from the encounter, uh, the coercive encounter and, and survive. Um, that's 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 the entire objective of the situation. Now, both of the times um, and, and I don't even when I get pulled over, I don't even I don't even film because there's there kind of seems to be this. <laughs> this inclination with bludgies that whenever there's a camera aimed on them, they feel like they're in a movie or something and they have to do something crazy. Um, so like the last few times I've gotten pulled over, which, which were basically within like a month and a half of each other in 2015, I didn't record the conversation. I didn't, uh, all, all I, you know, the, the cop, you know, pulled me over. I didn't argue it or anything like that. Even though mm. one of them was complete bullshit. One of them was a paper paperwork <laughs> violation, but um, I didn't, uh, you know, the cop, you know, asked a bunch of questions. I just said, uh, I exercised my right to remain silent, and I just didn't really say anything, mm-hmm. and and it went, you know, just super quick because I wasn't going to tell them anything, and uh, you know, they it, it was like ten, fifteen minutes is all it took. I wasn't even late for work, and because mm-hmm. I didn't, you know, I didn't fuck with him. Um, I didn't, tr- I didn't, you know, try to piss him off. So, I mean. The, so yeah, it, it was unfortunate that in both cases I had to pay like a well actually for for the paperwork violation I have to pay anything I just had to go to court and miss a little work, but uh, as far as the other one yeah I paid like 120 dollars to the state of Michigan and you know it sucked but oh well I survived I survived so yeah you survived you survived you you can't you can't practice Vanu in jail right I know so <laughs> oh but this um uh, you and I talked about this a little pre-show and. And and I, I want to bring it up now, um, since we're talking about risk versus reward, about this uh, this sovereign citizen down in Alabama. He uh, let's th- okay. So so the, the the shooting happened in 2014, but uh, a lawsuit that's going on uh, made the uh, the tape have to be released. But um, it's about this, this guy, and and he has he had his. Um, Three kids, his girlfriend and his three kids in the car, all of them under the age of ten, and they found this stray dog, um, in the in the Walmart parking lot, and so they put it in the car and tried to take it to the animal shelter. Um, the animal shelter asked for his driver's license. They wouldn't accept the dog if he didn't show his license. Um, he said he didn't have the right. They said the they didn't have the right to require a license. He said he dropped the dog elsewhere. Um, he's, then they said he couldn't leave if he was just going to dump the dog. Um, he, um, he said he was stuck, got agitated, walked outside. And then a police officer started following him and wouldn't let him leave without producing a license. Um, a few months earlier, according to his cousin, um, he began to read about sovereign citizens, anti-government movement that often includes, among other things, uh, complicated arguments against the constitutionality of driver's license, blah, blah, blah. So the, the, the guy started arguing. The guy started arguing with the cop about the constitutionality of the driver's license, and there was a scuffle, and then the cop put a barrel to the guy's stomach and pulled the trigger and killed the guy. And this is this is uh, another one of those situations where – the it's 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 risk versus reward is is the risk of trying to do the sovereign citizen movement is 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 the risk of not having a driver's license worth the reward of not having a small little piece of plastic with your picture and name on it yeah it's uh, it's illegal exercise according to Rhea. makes you more vulnerable to coercion definitely does um and i, I guess just a little side note uh, i guess a little point of frustration with all these articles uh you know with, with the patriot movement with the sovereign citizens they always get touted as anti-governments which is yeah. complete bullshit uh the patriots are you know they're as pro-government as it gets as long <laughs> as you know the their government's confined within these irrational 
um, you know, um, unrealistic, uh, you know, yeah. restrictions. But My um, like uh, paper. for for a lot of these sovereign citizens, I mean, it's even more kind of theocratic than that. Um, I mean, mm-hmm. yeah, a constitution, but it's kind of like a theocracy as well. It seems like uh, there was one. Uh, I used to be a sovereign citizen, and uh, there's one organization I used to attend their weekly calls. Uh, it's called the Republic for the United States of America, and they have like a parallel government set up or some shit. There's a president, President Turner, or something like that. And um, at the beginning of the calls, and this is why I stopped listening because th- like it was, they have their like Bible study calls like every week. Week, but then like the first 30 minutes of their you know when they're talking shop about you know how to find freedom the first 30 minutes are just like uh they have a priest like a pastor come on and and you know read a bunch of bible verses and such um like it so like, it was nothing related to you know finding freedom it was just like a little church mm-hmm. club it seemed um but but anyways yeah they aren't anti-government um they definitely are not anti-government so i guess that was one one point there uh, that i just wanted to bring up is it's kind of frustrating it's kind of frustrating no i i i, I agree that they're, they're not anti-government they're they're very much pro their government. They're anti the current government, just like people were anti the a lot of the anarchists. They were they were anti Obama's government, but now they're pro Trump government, which I don't know. They they need to work on the definition of words. Um, <laughs> but uh, uh, again, again, as as you mentioned, it's it's the the little driver's license that that little piece of plastic. Um, it, it is, it is a legal interstices. It is a legal interstices. It, and, and having that little piece of paper greatly reduces your vulnerability to coercion. I'm not saying it's, it's, it's an act of honor to have it, but it, it, it reduces the amount of risk that, that you are under. So I, I don't, I don't see why people are, well, I, I, I do see why, but it's I'm, just, I, I mean, it's. So you if, know if what you, I'm if trying you, to say. Yeah, if, if you have if you have the magic piece if you have the magic plastic piece of plastic, um, you can mm. you can now drive. I see a meme going around all the time, and it's it's hilarious. It's like a car you know blasted into a tree, and it's like a, a driver's license yeah. expired on the road. <laughs> driver's um, license just expired, yeah. <laughs> but um, I mean, if you like if you don't have license plates, if you don't have a driver's license, you're guaranteed to get a boatload of coercion. Like there's no way around it, uh, unless you're mm. Derek Bros and get really super fucking lucky. Um, like when he was on his way to Chicago, I don't know how he pulled that off. But um, I mean, good karma. You're, you're, good you're, karma. You're, you're you're gonna you're gonna you're gar- you're almost guaranteed to come up come across coercion. But if you have the driver's license and the insurance, um, you're you're less likely. Again, you don't rely upon them, as Rayo said, because uh, you know the stipulations may change if the bludgy you know says that he smells dope in your car or something like that. So, um, so yeah, yeah, um. Good little discussion there. I guess uh, any anything else on that note? Uh, no, I mean we, we've 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 nailed it. I mean it's it's risk versus reward. It's it's, Cho- it's how choosing much your battles. How, yeah, cho- choose your battle. Thank you. It's it's how much are you willing to risk for not having a little piece of paper or or for not having you know the 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 proper sticker on on your car. You know, not having those things. Um, just as in Jeremy's case, um, sometimes so, uh, sometimes you have to deal with the state in order to facilitate your freedom, right? Because because if if you're not if you if you refuse to deal with the state, well then they'll send people with guns to shoot you in the face or throw you in a cage. You, there, there, there's no freedom in jail. Right. Again, Bonnie is based on reality, and the reality of the situation is, and has been yes. basically forever, um, that the state exists and the state of servile society exists, and therefore, um, you know, the, the the best we can do, and I think it's a pretty damn good, uh, pretty damn good solution, is to become as invulnerable to that coercion as humanly possible. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yep. By whatever so, yeah. means necessary. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So. Um, all right, let's go on. This is gonna be a, this is another fun discussion. I'm looking forward to this. So uh, uh, this <laughs> next one, Vanu in the digital realm. So the idea, obviously, this was kind of sparked by, uh, you know, all of the uh, all of the nonsense happening on on fascist tube and fascist book and Twitter and those sorts of platforms where they're basically just deplatforming people who have. For, for for whatever reason, violation of their terms and use of policy and, and, and that. And even, well, I guess we can go ahead and mention Cody Wilson, um, you know, had his uh, shop, sh- he had his uh, store, sh- his Ghost Gunner store shut down by Shopify. And uh, <laughs> so funny watching him on Twitter, dude. Oh, my God. I don't know if you've been following it, but. Uh, I, ha- I do. <laughs> I do. <laughs> he's, he's, he's calling Toby, like, you know, bitch made blog post because he put up one like last year about how, you know, he, he gets like 100 emails a day from people, you know. Why are you hosting Breitbart's store? And he's like, you know, free speech is important. And then they shut down Cody's store, and he he I guess amended 
the uh this the you know the the policy and that uh you know that blog post on medium so just really really hilarious uh, to kind of watch cody you know call him out mm-hmm. on that but i guess another note uh you know i'm wearing my anarchy ball shirt in solidarity with anarchy ball because they got shut down from twitter um and if it didn't get reinstated last I, last i check it didn't so um yeah they were one of the uh, the casualties and and the meme war i guess but um <sighs> <laughs> so yeah this is kind of sparked by that and i think it, it kind of you know opens us up to a broader question oh yeah me more veteran i like it um <laughs> it kind of opens up like you know i guess a more general discussion uh with y- you know how to how to how you know vanu in the digital realm how to make yourself more invulnerable to coercion in the physical and i guess in the digital realm so obviously since we're still in the crypto anarchism series but we are kind of have been t- i guess taking a few week break to do some live streams um obviously you know encryption uh pgp pretty good privacy also what whatever you can go listen to the encryption episode there's a lot of ways you can uh, you know encrypt your communications online uh using vpns virtual private networks to um you know hide uh you know hide the ip address of uh, where you're searching from um i2p internet invisibility project which will be a subject of discussion um and one of the uh, i guess the last few episodes of this series and uh cryptocurrency inside of credit cards and uh, you know, et cetera, et cetera. I want to mention one other interesting thing I came I came across and did some research into last night. But uh, using Yacy, a decentralized web search other than Google. So the idea here, uh, and I'll read just a little bit from their website. Uh, and this will be, I guess, a little introduction to a more fuller episode on the subject. But how do you, uh, how do you spell that? Y a c y. Yep. So it's y a c y dot net. Um, so Yacy is a free uh, free search engine that anyone can use to build a search portal for their internet or to help search the public internet. When contributing to the worldwide peer network, the scale of Yacy is limited only by the number of users in the world and can index billions of web pages. It is fully decentralized. All users of the search engine network are equal. Uh, the network does not store uh, store user search requests and it is not possible for anyone to censor the, the content of the shared index. We want to achieve freedom of information through a free distributed web search, uh, which is powered by the world's users. And uh, I guess I'll go ahead and just drag this over. I'm going to block your your picture out for a moment, Jason. Um, oh, my God. So that's kind of the idea here. We've got uh, the easy web crawl, and it's kind of uh, you know a dis- distributed sort of thing. It's not through a single point of failure, but that's a live image of the free world network. So it's pretty, pretty, uh, pretty cool. Um, but it's uh, easy to use. I haven't used it yet, but I watched tutorials on it. It's super simple. And the idea is if you're searching for something and there aren't a lot of results for it, you just go run a crawler, a web crawler for those search terms, and it'll just go and crawl the Internet for, for those things. So the idea is that, you know, everyone's contributing to, uh, you know, this distributed search platform. And uh, it's a really, really interesting ide- idea. And, yes, you know, last night was the Vanu coin meeting, so, you know, we talked about this. I'm uh, not going to tell you exactly <laughs> why, but, um, you know, we, we, did, we did talk about this. Uh, it's a really, really interesting possibility. And as far as uh, coercion when it comes to, to Google and uh, uh, to, to Google, um, you know, even DuckDuckGo, which I like, but I don't think DuckDuckGo is, is mm-hmm. you know, distributed peer, distributed and peer-to-peer. I don't think it is. No, um, it's so, not. So the, so the benefit with this is that, <clears throat> I mean, with Google, you know, they'll, they'll track you with ads and, you know, I, I think they can even, you know, they can even, you know, render our thoughts into advertisements because I've, I've seen a lot of people, you know, you think about something and it just shows up being an ad. I don't know. That might be a little hyperbole, but um, it seems like that <laughs> at times. You've never searched for I, it before, never, you know, never talked about it, but... <laughs> God damn, I've, an I've, for it. yeah i've i've said i've said things in messenger and then the ad will show up on on instagram or facebook yeah yeah so that's yeah. that's 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 one thing obviously uh and we'll talk about this you know more in a moment but um obviously google and fascist book and and twatter are you know basically just really really incredible tools for the, the surveillance state uh and you know mass data collection uh so you, these platforms definitely do make you more more vulnerable to coercion uh now yacy on the other hand is a is a good alternative there but we'll talk about that more <laughs> Uh, you know, in, a, in another episode. So I think what we need to talk about first, Jason, because it seems to be the most uh, contentious subject. It uh, seems like, uh, you know, anarchists are kind of torn on this one. Um, you know, there's the, the, and, you know, Corbett pointed out this kind of dichotomy, and it might not have been particularly this, but, you know, James Corbett did a really incredible video on this. But there seems to be kind of two responses from anarchists. And one is that, you know, you, you know fa- fascist book is a private platform, and therefore they can, you know, shut anyone down that they want to. That's one. <laughs> then there seems to be, th- then there seems to be the second the second position, which I'm more more inclined to agree with, that um, basically, 
<laughs> you know, can they really be considered private companies anymore? And re reason being, I mean, so to a degree, yes, you know, they're private companies. But when a company works hand in hand with the state, it's hard to call them a private company anymore. Um, it's basically, you know, these 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 ma these huge, you know, social media giants. They're basically public private partnerships, as far as I'm concerned. Um, so it's super super fascistic. And um, now I I that being the case. Uh, obviously, I don't think you know the that the the internet should become a public utility, or you know Facebook should become a public <laughs> utility, and you know everyone's got equal rights and equal access to it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean uh, you, you look at kind of uh, radio, and you know when that kind of you know, ended up in the purview of the state, and uh, now radio just kind of sucks unless uh, you know some of those stations the Freedom Fiends are on, and you know some of the some of the shows that get uh, you know uh, I guess put on you know AM FM radio through through LRN, but. Um, I mean that's a ter that's obviously a terrible terrible solution and one that uh, anarchists should never um, <laughs> advocate for if they have any understanding of history and and how uh, you know the state uh, utilizes these technologies for their own ends and it's never in the uh, in, in the uh, interest of freedom uh, or free speech or anything of that nature so um, yeah so social media platforms I'm more inclined to just you know say that these are public private partnerships um, that's kind of my my view on it so I guess I'll turn it over to you for right now Jason what, what do you have. Um, I'm, I just Googled, I just Googled, uh, uh, Facebook NSA and there are literally hundreds of articles pointing out the connections between Facebook and the NSA. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, there was, there was one, uh, and this was something Corbett talked about, but it was like 2004 or something like the, uh, there was, uh, some governmental agency that was trying to come up with something like Facebook. Um, but then Facebook came around and they just, you know, they closed down that mm -hmm. project and. Yeah, no, there's no, no, now there's fascist book. Um, you know, Corbett was, was, <laughs> was on point enough, you know, back in, uh, you know, back, like he never had a Facebook account. He kind of saw exactly what was going on. Mm -hmm. Um, but, but yeah, there's, there's certainly connections there. <laughs> certainly connections there. Some, some, yeah. Some and, and ones. isn't, and isn't Facebook a publicly traded company? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's, well, a, it's an IPO. Therefore, there. yeah, therefore it is not a private company. Right. I mean, isn't that the way it works? Um, yeah, so. well, it's, so it's 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 so yes, yeah, it's, it's you know it's uh you know the 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 shareholders and the board members I guess would be the ones that have the the right to make these decisions. But I don't know how many fascist book board members are you know providing input on what the the pol the terms and policy should be. Um, maybe there are some. I don't know, but I I highly 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 doubt it. Yeah, yeah, that's, I that's, highly doubt it. It's uh, you cannot the the you cannot have a tool like facebook as as large as this what is it what is it like like three three billion accounts or something like that yeah. four billion accounts something like that right that's that's half that's over half the world's population which we know is realistically like 17 anarchists and like seven seven billion you know status and like 13 <laughs> different uh, sock accounts per anarchist but the um <laughs> you, you can't you can't have a tool like facebook like Twitter, like Google, as as huge as Google is, you, you, as <sighs> what we know about government, right? With 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 the NSA and, and and the FBI and DHS and and warrantless wiretapping and and the FISA court and all that, you cannot have a tool like Facebook, like Google, like YouTube, like Twitter, uh, Instagram, all, all these other things. You, you <sighs> it is illogical to think a tool like this exists. Without the government's interference in it. Oh yeah, they probably they probably saw the potential really early on. Mm -hmm. Holy hell! If it they is, get people to use this, oh boy. What it is? It is every, every okay. So the, they have they have your picture, they have your personal information, they have your 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 private conversations with other people, they have your literally everything about you, literally everything you you track yourself. Via Facebook, via Instagram, via Twitter, by, by your your, your check-ins, by what you're watching, what you're doing, where you're at, who you're hanging with, by your pictures. It it is it is it is it is a self-imposed NSA. That's 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 what Facebook it is, is a self-imposed NSA. Yeah, um, and, and everyone voluntarily subscribes to everything. Yo, even me included. I mean, and, and we'll talk uh -huh, about it. we'll talk too. about this more, but. Me too. 
<clears throat> yeah, and I want to just point out, uh, you know, an article that Rayo wrote in uh, March of 1973 called "What Is Big Brother Watching?" So Rayo kind of saw the uh, the way technology was going uh, as mm-hmm. as well. So if you want to check that out, just go to volumepodcast.com and search for "What Is Big Brother Watching." I'll put a link in the show notes as well. Mm-hmm. But uh, so that kind of leaves, you know, especially for Venuans, for for privacy minded people, for for fo- for Venuans who you know, understand what these platforms are used for. Uh, you know, why are, why am I still on it? Uh, you know, maybe why are, why are you still on it as well? Um, I mean, I think, I think the best thing we can do right now, um, honestly, is not necessarily abandon those networks yet. There's a lot of people to reach. And, you know, I talked about it last week. I've, a lot of people find the podcast through fascist book. I mean, that's just the mm-hmm. way it is. Um, I wish, I wish no one found it through fascist book because I could just close it down and not care about it. Um, but that's just not the reality. Um, you know, these are big platforms. They're, they're they're kind of the best ones for for marketing. And even though the organic reach has been kind of nuked, um, there's still some good organic reach that's that you can sometimes foster there. Um, I think the and this is kind of what corporate recommended. He's like, you know, you don't have to get all and and also too just the the fact that you know you're connected to everyone you want to be connected with, and not everyone's going to move over to a different platform. So like if if you only connect connect with somebody through fascist book and you live halfway across the world, I mean to lose that connection would be pretty drastic. And as Jeremy was saying last week, um, it would be hard to do what he's doing without access to fascist book, much like for even for my own little 10 day thing. Um, it would have been really hard to, to organize that without having that platform. So beyond that though, I think the best thing, and again, this is what Corbett kind of recommended, not, you know, not just giving up on those platforms, but starting to build the alternatives. Um, so mm-hmm. like, instead of, you know, going on fascist tube, Stream on D Live. Hey, we're doing that. Cool. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, or, or you know, instead of going on, uh, you know, uh, YouTube again, either use D uh, Tube or Bit Tube, which I actually uh, tested out last night, and it works a lot better than D Tube. You might want to get on board with that, Jason, uh, because you just, mm-hmm. uh, if you have it on, it, it connects to YouTube, so and it automatically just pulls in your YouTube videos. So it's a very. I, up, I uploaded like ten in an hour um, to the Bit Tube, and you can, and the, the way that it works is. Um, so when someone watches a video, um, it mines something called uh, BitTube coin, and that BitTube coin is paid out to the to the creators. And there's there's also curation rewards like on Steam it too, so you can still get paid for for content. Um, so that's a really interesting, I guess, an interesting alternative. Um, you know, there's. Um, I mean, there's Twitter alternative. We talked about zero nets. Um, there's you know alternatives to all these things there, uh, but that's not widely used. The problem you need to fix that. Um, there are a lot of alternatives out there, and um, I, I think I think the best thing we can really do is try to build up those build up those communities, um, and you know whatever the best one is, it will win out, and you know um, it, it's whatever one wins out. I mean we we kind of win, right? Uh, if it's a decentralized mm-hmm. you know blockchain based platform, uh, we win anyways. So I think it's I think just the best thing we can do is just use those alternative platforms and and try to try to build those up. What do you think? Well, a- absolutely, I I agree with that absolutely, uh, and and I I do want to say that that. That Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, um, et cetera, et cetera, uh, they are tremendous tools for us also. You know, they they do allow the the interconnectivity. I would not have heard, heard of Vanya without Facebook, right? You and I would not be connected if if, if it had not been for Facebook. Um, that would have been a nap violation. We wouldn't have yeah. done it. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, um, the, the the quote anarcho movement I hate using that term but the 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 amount of people that are learning about voluntarism learning about anarchism learning about libertarianism learning about um, laissez-faire economics learning about Austrian economics learning all these things all these fantastic things has grown exponentially since Facebook right since Twitter since since YouTube um, it allows you to connect with with so many other people. It it allows you to do one, make one post, make one video, make make one statement, and it can be seen by tens, hundreds, thousands of people. So yeah, yeah, it it, it the, the the state is there. The state is there, but it it can almost be considered a legal interstices of sorts because it it allows you to connect with other people and then you can connect with them via elsewhere like you know signal and 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 all these you know um these these stimic connect sites and and all this other stuff and, and you know d live and all this other stuff um 
so I, I think they're tremendous tools. They're absolutely tremendous tools, and, and, and I do not advocate abandoning them. Um, I, I, I do see them as uh, – for. Uh, I don't want to say the, the, the foundation, but they're, they're definitely like – I'm just calling that they're 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 really the 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 foundation of 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 building the second realm of of all these other sites because without Facebook, without YouTube, without Instagram, without Twitter, um, these other sites would not exist because there would not be a market demand for them. Number one, and number two, um, there'd be no way to promote them. Yes, and that's a good. That's a very good point because yeah. if you look at things like uh, Interplex.net, which <laughs> uh-huh. if you don't know what that site is, if you haven't gone and read everything on there, go do that. Interplex.net. Yes. But uh, like the uh, like the book Second Round Book on Strategy and uh, mm-hmm. also uh, Lodging of Wayfaring Men, um, and even hashtag Gore too, guys. Uh, you know, no one before I found these books. Um, I mean, no one really knew about them, right? No one had any idea I, of like, had, what these things were. I had were. never heard of them. So, I had never heard and, of them. And, I mean, that's a, that's a demonstration. You know, it's very, very, like, people, I think the, the the way that they kind of approach it is the people that are meant to see the information will come and will stumble across it. Maybe. I don't know. They're just really private people. And um, But, you know, th- I mean, maybe they're only really focused on, you know, building the second realm there in, in you know, Berlin or wherever the hell they are. Um, but I mean, yeah, you're exactly right. Without, without these big platforms of promotion, I mean, it'd be really hard to, to push these ideas out there mm-hmm. and to actually see them come in fruition. So yeah. it's, yeah, there's, it's, there's it's no... it really, really, yeah, it really, really sucks. And I, at the same time though, I'm like, it's, it's with, with what we're seeing right now, we're, we're seeing the, the problem with these centralized institutions, even, you know, a lot of, we're, 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 we're definitely not that we, we knew that before, but, uh, you know, more people are seeing the problem with these centralized institutions and, I think it's 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 a good thing because um, basically you know there's there people can build alternatives now and mm-hmm. better yet instead of you know advertisers making money instead of um, uh, you know you know fascist book basically just uh, you're on their platform and they're making money off of you and you aren't really getting you're you're getting the connections and all, all we've talked about out of it but um, with these other platforms I mean there's monetization. Um, and there's no way, like with YouTube or with Fascist Tube, they can just shut. They can just demonetize videos. They can demonetize your entire channel. They can shut it down. Not on these other platforms. So, <coughs> with, you know, there's so there's there, there's a problem with them, but we're seeing solutions, and these solutions are becoming more and more used. So, um, I, I think it's uh, I think it's a great thing. I think it should keep closing down accounts. Um, you mm-hmm. know, just just keep shutting them down because no, I'm kind of kidding. It's kind of you know, tongue in cheek right there a little bit. But um, <laughs> I mean. It, yeah, it's it's kind of like uh, it's it's kind of like the the idea that um, I think Lufino is the person I heard say this, but uh, you know, yeah, let the state get more tyrannical. Hell yeah, mm-hmm. more anarchy. Absolutely. Okay, so you know, uh, the 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 tyranny of the state is what led me to to Ron Paul, which led me to libertarianism, which eventually led me to anarchism. The 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 state did that. The state caused me to to seek out alternatives. Um, and with with platforms like like Facebook, like I became. I, I became an anarchist because of Facebook. Facebook allowed me to to connect with people, allowed me to find this information, and it, it, it allowed me to uh, to to be given resources for for my own reading, for my own watching. Um, like with, without without Facebook and and, and YouTube, um, I would still be you know a card carrying member of the Republican National Committee or the Republican National. National Party, I'd still be, you know, bomb the Middle East and turn it all into glass. I'd still be that guy. So yeah. I, th- I think, I think uh, again, Facebook is a tremendous tool. Um, and and as you know, Ben Stone says, you know, the as as long as there's a market demand for the state, the state will exist. Well, you can't promote alternatives to the state if you can't reach people. Yeah. Right. And 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 Facebook again, it gives us that opportunity. To, to reach people, you know, the people aren't going to go looking for alternatives to, to, to the police if they don't know where to look, you know, Facebook gives them that. They don't even know there's an alternative. I mean, it's just kind of like uh-huh. the servile society. A lot of people don't know that there's an option of mm-hmm. no government, <laughs> which is mm-hmm. crazy, right? Um, but at the same time, I guess it's, uh, it's kind of understandable, at least in a sense. 
But, uh, you know, Jason, this is not a, like th this conversation expands even further than social media platforms, though. Uh, for mm -hmm. example, um, there's uh, there's a guy named Jay Dyer who he does some conspiratorial stuff. He's been on Brett's show, Brett Vinat's show uh, from the School Sucks Project. And Brett's been on his show as well, I'm pretty sure. And, uh, you know, he goes into conspiracies and such. Um, you know, nothing, you know, not not even not crazy like Alex Jones or anything like that where he gets, you know, lawsuits every day or anything. <laughs> but um, and I'm not sure how many people know about this, but Jay Dyer's website was shut down by WordPress. So WordPress came after his site. Mm -hmm. So that's a problem. So like for those who use WordPress like me, um, you know, back up everything back up everything like as as often as you possibly can and uh you know mirror as much mirror 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 your stuff as, as, as many as many places as possible because um this expands far beyond just the reach of mm -hmm. social media so um there's also domain name registrars and hosts um like um you know there there are uh, uh like uh, if you violate the terms and i guess the terms of use for for whoever's hosting your stuff i mean they can shut it down um mm -hmm. they can shut like, down your uh, sites um uh, go Daddy, Go Daddy, shut down Chris Cantwell. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I mean, it's there. There's there's still a lot of work to do. There's still a lot of tools that need to be built. Um, and and there's some tools that are already out there, like Zero Nets. Um, but you know, there's there's still in kind of the early phase of this, uh, especially adoption wise. So, I mean, whether it's you know the the centralized you know single point of failures like face like like fascist book or if we're talking about GoDaddy like a domain name registrar or some host um there even if you escape one problem um you know you could still face another like for uh like fa say for steam it or dtube or uh, or something like that um they could the, the websites could still get shut down now um all of the content would still be hosted on the blockchain but people, you wouldn't have a way to access it, at least through um, mm -hmm. through the clear net or whatever. So, I mean, there's still a lot. There's there there's solutions out there, but there's still a lot of problems that need to be resolved. But uh, you know, with as much as that's happened, and even just the past four years uh, with the development of these platforms, uh, I think we're going to see uh, some really really incredible solutions come out. Some of them that already exist now. So, um, I mean, I'd 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 recommend again, go to zeronet.io. And, uh, uh, you know, set up, a, a, you know, set up, a, you know, uh, your, your website there. I'm still working on that for LUA and TVP. I want to get, uh, mm -hmm. you know, the, uh, you know, my website's on there too, but, uh, you know, they can't shut it down. You know, as long as there's someone serving the site, um, you know, you can, uh, you know, you can, you can access the information. So zero and it's a really good, really good, uh, possibility. Go listen to the episode and uh, I guess I don't remember what uh, number it was, but uh, funnypodcast.com and just uh, you know scroll down and you'll find uh, the episode where we talk about zero nets. Uh, really good uh, possible solution there. Um, maybe a little too, as far as just accessing it and using it, um, it's super easy to do. Uh, you know, using their encrypted email feature, you know, setting up a social media account, setting up a, I guess, Twitter alternative, super easy to do. Setting up the website's a little more complicated. Or at least being, uh, you know, delayed or or halted for for some time. I think it's a good thing overall because um, without problems, uh, there can be no solutions. So, uh, what else yep. do you have, man? Uh, a necessity is the mother of invention. Um, so yeah, having 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 these sites shut down some people, um, it is inspiring others to to make moves and and to start doing things. Um, that are alternative to, to these said sites. Um, and it is causing people to search and it is causing people to, to connect with people that are, that are outside of, of these sites. So they're, uh, f to use another cliche, I mean, you, you can't, you can't make an omelet without breaking a few eggs. Well, it, it, it sucks that eggs have to get broke, but you know, you, you can't, you, we can't build the second realm. We can't build these alternative sites without the necessity for these alternative sites, you know, and, and things like, like Anarchy Ball getting shut down. Anarchy Ball was super popular, right? And it was, it's, it's, it's large on Facebook and, and I, I hope they come back onto Twitter, but, but, um, having them get shut down brought a lot of publicity, to, to Anarchy Ball and, and, and to, to why they were shut down and, and to the ideas that, that they try to expound. So having that egg broke does have positive um, positive ripples. So 
it's not necessarily. I mean, it, it it sucks for Anarchy Ball, but on the on the the large scale of things, it's just another little pebble in the pond, causing another ripple. And you know how the butterfly effect works, you know. So you know, uh, rip, ripples become waves, waves become tidal waves, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um. Yeah. Yeah, I think yeah. we should probably cover a couple other things here. Um, I, as I want to talk about, you know, we're talking about Vanu and, you know, invul- invulnerability to coercion. And I, I'm sure there's some listeners out there saying, well, are you saying, are you, are you, are you really implying that, you know, fa- Facebook and Twitter shutting down accounts is coercion? And generally, no. Generally, no. no. But at the same time, there are a couple things that we, we probably should discuss. And I'll start with an episode by Glenn Greenwald uh, from December 2017. But uh, the title is Facebook says it's deleting accounts at the direction of the U.S. and Israeli governments. Now, if <laughs> it's a government instructing fascist book to shut down your mm-hmm. account, I would say that's coercion because governments have no, I mean, I mean, that's funny to say, but, you know, governments, <laughs> you know, as per the First Amendment, they, they can't, you know, they can't shut down free speech. At that point, it'd be a free speech violation, wouldn't it, if it was instructed by, uh, instructed by governments? Um, I would say so. Um, I, I would say so. Now, if it's just, you know, fascist books, algorithms or Twatter's algorithms that are doing it. No, I wouldn't say it's coercion. No, it's not. Um, but if the state is involved, I, I would say, yeah, I mean, you know, you know, violations of free speech. I would say I would consider those, uh, you know, that that coercion. What do you mm-hmm. think? Uh, I agree. I agree completely with that. Um, and I do know that there are report groups like there, there, there are groups on Facebook where all that they do is report things like like somebody will see something they don't like or, or that they don't they disagree with and they'll share it into this group and everybody in the group or, or whoever sees it in the group will go report the post or re- report the page um, and again that's that's not necessarily that's, that that's not necessarily coercion because you know they, they can report all day long it's, it's up to the site, what the site does, uh, it's up to the algorithms, what the algorithms do. So I, I, again, that that's not coercion unless acted upon by, you know, some sort of authoritarian government. Um, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, I guess just one other thing, and this is something that you sent, uh, that you sent me, but, uh, exclusive U S government seeks Facebook help to wiretap messenger. Um, <laughs> Now it's that's that's funny, uh, you know, like these these sorts of things are just are ridiculous to me. Um, like there's that uh, that the the government, you know, asked Apple to unlock the iPhone from like the San Bernardino shooter. Um, that mm-hmm. one, you know, maybe that's a little believable that you know maybe they needed help from a private contractor. But uh, like I think like I really think that this is just <sighs> I don't know. I I really think that this is just. Um, you know, a PR piece to make people think that, you know, the government can't, you know, access Facebook, your Facebook messenger messages. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's, that's kind of dumb because, you know, as, you know, as per Edward Snowden, you know, the prison program, you know, these major corporations, you know, basically put in back doors for the state. So, um, I, I'm pretty, pretty by law, uh, by, they put in back doors by law. Yeah. So, right, the, I mean, the, this, the, the loss, you know, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I, I think this is kind of <laughs> bullshit. Um, but yeah, you know, the government's trying to force Facebook to break the, break the encryption to his popular messaging app so law enforcement can listen to a suspect's voice conversations in a criminal probe. Now, unless these voice conversations are encrypted, you know, using Zimmerman real-time protocol, then, yeah, no, I, I, <laughs> um, yeah, I, I really don't think, uh, yeah, I think this is just bullshit. But anyways, obviously the privacy violations are something worth noting, uh, for the new ones, so... Um, I think that's basically all. That's basically all that I had. Um, is there any, anything else uh, on these uh, on these subjects uh, that you wanted to, to to mention? Uh, no, not really. I mean, I, I think we've said it all, um, and we've we've talked about it before about um, using things like like Signal and and, and PGP and 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 these other methods of, of communication that are that are not you know. Facebook that are not Twitter. Um, I think people need to get into those and, and, and start like learning to lose, use those things and get away from saying, I don't know, sensitive shit. Quit saying sensitive shit on Twitter, on, on, on Facebook. You know, it's tracked. We know it's tracked. Edward Snowden said it was tracked. The, 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 uh, what is it? The, uh, some some general I don't remember his name at some conference. Oh, it's not it's not tracked. It's we're not spying on you. Blah 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 blah. Well, a, a year later he admitted, yeah, okay, we're we're spying on you. Yeah, that <laughs> and, and even even in addition to that, uh, for some of the um, 
like for uh, like the Mallory, I think it was for Casey Massey's case actually. Um, you know the the I guess the government created a fake account, added him as a friend, and Casey accepted it. And uh-huh. then you know like in the court documents, I guess in the discovery, um, you know there were status updates and posts and all that. I mean they didn't even need to become a friend to do that. Um, but um, that's the method that they that they used then. So I mean yeah, that's right. it's it's. Yeah, clearly, clearly, all of that, uh, all of that is tracked, and that's I think that's kind of in the mainstream consciousness now. Consciousness now, even by, you know, statists like, oh, yeah, the government's watching. This is a funny joke. Uh, you know, there be no privacy. It's a funny joke. You know, it's for national security. Um, I think most people know and are, are aware of mm-hmm. that situation. But I guess what kind of frustrated me is whenever there was, you know, like news articles talking about how, you know, uh, Dolan J. Tramp's phone was tapped by, you know, some government agency or something. Uh, you know, the conservatives were up in arms, like he deserves privacy. It's like, dude, he's a public figure. Um, he's been a public figure forever. You can't you, you you can't have an expectation of privacy as a public figure. Um, but they they if, didn't they didn't care if, they didn't care my, about uh, they didn't care about you know the the fact that the NSA was doing the same thing to them all the time. No, they didn't, they didn't give a shit about that. No. Ex- exactly. Like if if my smartphone is tapped, if if the NSA is listening to my smartphone, you're goddamn right. They're listening to some sort of presidential nominee. Yeah. <laughs> Come on now. He's 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 a billionaire. Of course they're spying on him. Yeah. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, so I guess the to, to, to kind of to, to kind of sum this up, I guess, you know, there 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 are a lot of advantages, um, you know, to to the digital realm, to the to to the digital second realms. Um, there there really are. I wouldn't consider Facebook a digital second realm, by the way. That's so that's that's we're kind of leaving that out of here. Um, there are a lot of advantages. Uh, there there really are. Um, and as we as we've said, you know, these these tools have have helped to you know even. Uh, help to, to grow the anarchist community, which I think is great. More people are learning about volume, more mm-hmm. people are learning about direct action, all these things. So that's that's a certainly a great thing. But uh, at the same time, I think uh, it's it's kind of our duty. Um, and that sounds, I don't know, it's, it's two words together. Um, I think it's uh, it, it's it's wise for, for, for anarchists and venuans to, to start utilizing these alternative platforms. Uh, most of them are very easy to use. Um, and, I, I mean, yeah, why not? Why not? Especially if you can, you know, have a chance at, you know, uh, monetizing your... Uh, monetizing your content or your posts so i think it's kind of a no-brainer and plus uh, i mean it'll it'll help to to further to further this decentralized world that we'd like to see come into fruition so um any other closing thoughts mean get on signal start using pgp start having a little freaking common sense when you're talking about things that are that are contrary to the government's plans yeah you know? yeah Exactly. Exactly. So um, that's uh, that's all we've got. Thanks so much for for joining me again, Jason. It was uh, it's, it's uh, fun as always. It was and, uh, it was an adventure this time. How about that? Yeah, we had yeah we had like three different stops <laughs> with three different topics, which I guess are kind of you know kind of similar at least in a sense. But uh, yeah, it was a good time. It was a good time. So uh, yeah, this podcast was brought to you by Audible. You get a free audiobook and thirty day free trial at audibletrial.com dot com forward slash Vanu. There are obviously a bunch of free, a bunch of great titles on there, but I recommend Going Mobile, a terrific Vanu and van life scene from the 1960s, narrated by yours truly. Uh, it features some incredible articles by Rayo and tons of uh, great insight from those living Vanu uh, back in, uh, I guess, uh, I guess, kind of those that, that largely developed the freedom strategy. So uh, again, that link is audibletrial.com forward slash Vanu, and I will start getting other audiobooks up there for you to choose from, uh, such as mine. Uh, you know, here, here, here soon. So uh, also keep in mind, my book, Vanu's Strategy for Self-Liberation, is available for pre-order. Just visit libertyunderattack.com forward slash Vanu book to reserve your copy today. Big thanks to the few that have, you know, ordered copies this week. Um, it's kind of a little bit of a lapse for a couple weeks. So it was nice. Uh, after a fascist book post, <laughs> I had like five sales. Um, so... It made me some money too, so I guess that's good. <laughs> but uh, yeah, lastly, patreon.com forward slash Vanu. Make sure to uh, you know hop on board. And uh, yeah, I get a lot of exclusive content, early digital access to my book, and uh, lots of other uh, great rewards as well. Uh, the website is vanupodcast.com, and now it has a, an SSL certificate, so your private information is even more secure, thankfully. Uh, so uh, yeah, thanks for tuning in, guys, and we will talk soon. <laughs>